the start of the day started with a planning meeting um, and in that meeting we look at the route that the guys are going to take um, and we arrange points where we're going to intercept them both for support reasons and also filming opportunity. During the planning meeting we identified a spot on the other side of Ennerdale Lake um, where we could safely launch the drone uh, within the regulations and so after the guys set off myself and Mick drove round and uh, we launched the drone and the idea at first was just to get some basic cutaways set the scene of, of where the guys were and then as Paul was traversing along the path of Ennerdale um, we were going to follow him. It was then when I started flying out just to try and suss out light conditions and positioning and framing and whatnot. At first I had clearly missed Paul on the on the viewfinder. I didn't see him at all. And then it's when I went back I noticed him hanging onto the side of this rock. And I thought, well, what's he doing? You know, this wasn't part of the plan. I know he's crazy, but he, and he, you know, he shouldn't be climbing up rocks. And we didn't realise the, the, how serious the situation was at this point. For me, the day started as I would expect it to start. Um, we'd got the plan. Um, I knew the route I was taking. Uh, the terrain I expected to be challenging. Um, it was very challenging and then I came to a point where there was two paths one running right which involved a scramble one running left which looked like it was kind of going to avoid that scramble I took the left path um, because it, for me that was going to be the easy option on my feet and as I got close to it I didn't expect what happened next I lost my footing I suddenly fell down the side of, uh, you know, the, the mountain and um, below me was a lot more rock, Ennerdale, water was there um, and I'm kind of in this space by now and thinking to myself, this isn't good, the weight of my body, the backpack was now all on a six inch ledge um, on my left foot. I know from training, from when I was in search and rescue, the panic can set in rather quickly and I knew I had about 20 seconds to try and figure something out in my head, get myself into a safe position and that involved me just pushing myself back till I figured out what I was going to do. At this point, I'm aware that Ian was somewhere above me. I don't think he knew where I was because I'd kind of just disappeared off the radar so quickly. But what I did know is I'm staring out into the lake at an extremely high height with a big drop below me and it's at that point going to be impossible to try and scale back up where I've just come from if I'm facing outwards. So I'm on a six inch ledge, I have to try and turn my body around, try and grip and get myself into a position where I'm facing back into the wall. I start panicking, I'm not going to lie, I'm thinking to myself this adventure has probably pushed me to a point here that I've not experienced before on any of the adventures and I even started thinking to myself, I think we looks finally run out now on these adventures. That's how this was making me feel with the panic. Not long after, I heard Ian shouting to me to stay put, not to move, he's gonna come down, everything's gonna be fine. They're the words I needed to hear. Everything was gonna be fine because I didn't believe everything was gonna be fine at this point. Um, this was a situation that was gonna be bad enough in hiking boots, but I had bare feet. And then all of a sudden, uh, I felt Ian grab my backpack. There's a loop on the back of the backpack. And I heard him say, just try and find your footing, try and find your hands, and start scaling up. I've got you, I'm not gonna let you go. And at that point, I felt him take the tension up. I felt safer immediately. And I started trying to find handholds to try and at least pull myself up on. And the pain on my feet, because those rocks were sharp, that went out of the window. I was almost in life preservation mode at this point, thinking I've got to get back up onto this path. Ian continued to pull me up um, from, from the area where I'd fallen down. 
um, to a point whereby I could get better footing, um, I could get on my knees, my feet were all scratched on the top and that was kind of the start of the injuries that rapidly um, came on my feet. Um, and at that point, once I was on the top, I knew I was safe. It was a case of, right, this has just happened. Realistically, I haven't got any time to reflect on this now. I'll reflect on it later. I've got to get round Ennerdale and get back on track with this challenge. Had Ian not been there, I'm not sure how the outcome um, would have transpired from this situation. Because I would have been on this mountainside above Ennerdale Lake, facing outwards, and people walking past me, not even aware that I'm there. And I don't know how things would have turned out from that. All we could do was just look through the, the, the drone's camera, just to monitor what was going on. Um, and it was clear to me here that I could be witnessing my friend's death here. Uh, and this, this was gonna get bad very, very soon. Um, but luckily Ian was there and he managed to pull him up. Um, yes, there was other people on that trail. Would they have heard Paul? Would they, would they have been able to help? We don't know. But uh, he's a lucky guy. Ian is an absolute hero. 